the Russian mobster. I haven't seen the American mobster in quite a while. Trufalaz. And I can't read this last name. Oh, I already said hi to you. YS Chaos. Yeah, that was a very nice last play because he chose to block with the rank one. All right, search options. Get rid of shareable. Get rid of bound. Add on unowned. Get rid of rare. Get rid of common. Start out with the Utera ones. Whee! Shard plate graft. The heroic. This is a decent draft card. I don't know that it's a first pick draft card, but it's decent. Uh, you can put it on any number of creatures that can quickly grow that were already hard to kill and make them all but unkillable in draft. In constructed, it has the same problem any other single target buff spell has, is that unless it is just absolutely an overwhelming buff, which this is not, uh, you're asking to be two for one. Build Your Own Monster hasn't been a very viable constructed option in quite a while. I uh, don't see that changing until at the earliest, the rebalance. There's just too much hard removal available, and everybody's going to be running some sort of hard removal. Well, not everybody, but most people are going to be running some sort of removal in constructed, and playing this just asks you to be two for one. So it's a fun and probably pretty good draft card, uh, but an underwhelming constructed card. Yeah, I don't think it will see any play. It's pretty close to equivalent, equivalent to Dryad's Boon. Um, except that Dryad's Boon can actually be better because it's not capped. If you play two creatures a turn, and in a deck playing Dryad's Boon, you're likely playing two creatures a turn. Uh, any multi-lane creature triggers extra times. And admittedly, this lets you play spells and get the same base level effect, so it's not strictly... It's not a one strictly better than the other, but there are definitely situations in which Dryad's Boon is better. There are situations in which this are better, and neither one of them is going to see constructed play. Both of them will see draft play, though. Ruby Scale Dragon. This guy is fun. I really like the card design here. I like the dragons, the flavor of most dragons that start out underwhelming at level one with a defender version. They have an egg. I kind of wish that was an actual ruby egg instead of a baby ruby dragon, but eh, beggars can't be choosers. Uh, its effect is something that is quite meaningful for Utera. I like it a lot better than Smolder Scale because there are so many ways to heal or counteract one damage to the board. I also like it so much better than Smolder Scale because its rank 2 is actually a viable creature. Draft Silver, it's Archangel's possible, but even still, you're asking to be beaten out by a uh, Dendrify, by... Duskmaw, by Shatterbolts, by the new Aloyan wipe all abilities and all uh, stuff from creatures and players. It's just, it's not a large enough grower. But yeah, Ruby Scale Dragon, it's got a respectable level 2 with 1 mobility and a really strong level 3 with... Uh, one mobility. I wish it. The only thing that I would have changed in terms of the design would be to make its rank three have two mobility. Go to Fender, mobility one, mobility two. Yeah. 18, 24, mobility one that buffs your board at the end of each of your turns. I'm fine with that. And it also heals you. So it goes into your Wagu decks. I know that this will show up in Wagu decks. I think it's going to be stronger in some other decks that don't contain Wagu. Uh, Dino's Cough Cough. <laughs> this plus, uh, this plus Behemoth plus Mastodon 
and brawn is just terrifying. Your creatures are growing their health, brawn's healing them, and of course Mastodon is creating them all even more health. Um, I think the Dino deck will really like this. Uh, I still think the Dino deck is going to be Dark Dinos, but I think Ruby Skill Dragon has a welcome home in the Dino deck. And I would cut out some of the lesser Dinos for him. Because it just synergizes so well with everything the Dino deck wants to do. All right, that was Uterra. Let's try Tempest. The Tempest Heroic, Trial by Combat. Um, from way back in my Magic days, way, 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 way long time ago, I read one of the very first Magic... I may have been the first Magic the Gathering book, sent in for the free card that came with it. It was a land called Arena. Arena was tapped. And target creature deals its damage to another creature, and another creature deals its damage to that creature. Basically, trial by combat. Two creatures deal damage to each other. The only difference is this one is a spell, and you buff your creature before doing it. Um, I'm not really sure that this is going to see a lot of play. It works well in the Rage deck style. Um, and if Rage makes a comeback, this probably gets a spot in it because it's a high, high damage, well-scaling card. When I say well-scaling in this case, not that the card itself scales well, but you, you, it's an underdrop. You can play it in rank three and just laugh. It does pair well with Alyssa. I was getting to that. Uh, Omen. I had to check and see who said it. Pairs very well with Alyssa. And, like I said, it will it, it works very well as an underdrop because you can have a rank 3, let's say, Frostbane Dragon on the board and take out a, another rank 3 creature with a rank 1 card. Not a big deal. <laughs> Uh, that's pretty powerful out of a rank one card. Much like Rage is a great underdrop. Move, Rage, they use this to clear out another creature. It, yeah. Get a lot of value out of it. Um, outside of a Rage style Alyssa deck, or a deck that is all about Alyssa all the time, I don't see it getting a lot of play though. It's too risky in terms of when you play it. When you're doing your deck building, you're saying that I have an inherent risk that I am trading creatures with this card. Because there will be times when you look at the board and you go, I have to kill that creature, but it's going to kill whatever I'm blocking with. Or using as the base card for Trial by Combat. So there's an inherent risk with it where you might want to take another card that can do quite a bit of damage, say a burnout or something like that, without the risk of blowing up your own creature. But it will see some play. I don't think it will be a top tier card. Phoenix Call, I hate. I just, there's so much wrong with this card. If you were watching the draft earlier, uh, you heard some of my commentary, and who was it? Level 9 Light Spell, I think, that I had to, no. Uh, Snuggletooth. I agreed with level 9 light spell. The dragon was really nice. Uh, on Snuggletooth, Phoenix Call is uh, bad. I I know I lost one of my draft games to it. The only one I lost was because my opponent played a rank 3 Phoenix Call. But My first problem is it's at random. So it's a spell that summons a Phoenix at random. Yes, the Phoenix does have a enter the field and continued uh, Cinder Smoke Wyvern effect. <laughs> Sorry, Snuggletooth. Uh, but it's just completely underwhelming. Its rank one has lower stats than said uh, Cinder Smoke. And at rank two and three, it only beats it out by one attack and significantly less health at rank three. 
On top of that, it doesn't have scaling mobility. Uh, it doesn't even get mobility until rank 3. Um, I'm hearing people say, or I'm seeing level 9 light spells saying that it could be interesting in an NT shell with Susie. Yeah, but I still think there are better options than Cryo Phoenix for Susie Q. I, even in an NT shell. Ah, to back up a stack, I see Draft Silver bringing up a point that I hadn't entirely considered. That Dragon Wake and Trial also play very well together. It is a two card combo that you have to draw together, but you Dragon Wake, pull back. Uh, we'll talk about it as though it's the burn deck. Pull back your uh, Skill Scale Dragon, have it the only one on the board. It's, uh, say, rank two. It's a 16 attack aggressive creature. You blow up a creature with the trial, you move, you blow up another creature, or you just push through your 16 damage. Yeah. Uh, that's possible. That could show up. But yeah, Cryo Phoenix. Random entry point. Uh, low damage. Doesn't have mobility. Make it a bad card. And then above all of that, the thing that drives me absolutely nuts about this card, terrible, terribly, terribly nuts, is it is not a phoenix. Nothing in the artwork screams phoenix to me, and nothing in the card design screams phoenix to me. You look at what they did with what, uh, the design of Everflame Phoenix. The card tells a very clear story, and it is the story of a phoenix. It blows up. It ashes. It comes back bigger, scarier, and more awesome. That is a Phoenix progression. This guy is just gets stronger at everyone, doesn't have a death or any sort of rebirth effect. I, I'm fine calling this Cryo Falcon. I'd be perfectly fine calling it something like Call Falcon, Cryo Falcon, and Creature Type Falcon. But it's not a Phoenix. Arrgh. Anyways, that's just my small rant on the card. Uh, not a phoenix. Bad card, not a phoenix. Will not see any constructed play, and it's legendary, so it won't see any draft play. Uh, again, I'm not a perfect expert. I have been wrong on cards before. I don't think that's going to be one of them. All right, Necrium. First, the heroic Grimgaunt Warrior. Fun little card. Um, <laughs> One Man Army says it even looks lame. I'm not going to necessarily disagree with it, but I'll leave that to each person's opinion. And I'm going to refer to it as Cryo Falcon. Uh, when a creature adjacent to Grimgot Warrior is destroyed, you control. It gets plus two, plus two, plus three, plus three, plus four, plus four. It scales... At the same rate as, uh, actually, it doesn't scale at the same rate as any other Grim God. Grim God Predator goes two two four four six six. Grim God Devourer is one one two two three three. Um, it starts out higher and ends higher than the Devourer, but it's only for creatures you control, and it requires some lane spacing. Uh, it'll be an effective card in draft, probably, where you can reliably set up creatures that are going to die. And you might see it tried out in Constructed, where you've got some sort of uh, sacrifice deck with Nefrax and Suzy Q. But I still think Grim God Devourer is going to be better for those decks. Yes, this guy has a stronger starting health, so he's less likely to just get blown up. But I, I could see an argument for using him in a Sacrifice deck over a Grimgaunt Devourer. Now, Sacrifice decks haven't been a thing in the main constructed meta for quite a while. Um, and I haven't played enough Unheroic, or sorry, unlegendary to know for sure, but I don't think they've really been one in unlegendary either. And I don't think this guy's strong enough to bring it back. So he'll show up in draft, but don't expect to see any great constructive play out of him. 
And he's not a top tier draft pick. Remembrance. This card is a combo enabler. Um, if you've got two card combos you want to work well together, or you've got cards that you only want to use the level one, and if you've got end of turn rank up cards, this guy does remarkable things. Um, given that I suspect that with the Alloyan Burn Hate spell, which we'll talk about in a minute, we'll start to see the meta slow down a little bit. Uh, 3.1 bombs like Othra can, might become very, very strong. I will almost guarantee you that this will show up in a deck with Othra. Play this on your 2.4. It doesn't matter that you're banishing a rank 2 author from your deck. You play all authors in level 1, play none of them in level 2 unless you draw them on 2.4, and remember it's any that are in your graveyard back into play. Sure, you banished a level 2 author, but you banished a 012 defender. Oh, boo hoo. And you get the 1050 poison 10 creature with 4 mobility. Going into rank 3 at the very start of rank 3. Uh, same as Old Phoenix had that problem where you then have a 1050, and if you're going first, you have a 1050 that is truly, completely, and totally unanswerable by your opponent. Because they will still be in rank 2 when you're sitting there with a rank 3 on the board. Um, that will happen. We will see that. And this will show up in decks like that. That is, in my opinion, going to be, I hope not, but potentially a uh, meta-defining deck. All right, Night Coaster Girl. Plus, it opens up a ton of two-card combos. Like somebody said before, uh, resurrecting your Duskmaw. That's not as good because it's into an available space at random. Um, but you can use it on patrons. If you've discarded patrons and say, I need a patron of Tarsus, and I have four... Well, no, patrons don't work either. I think of a good two-card combo that it would work for. I'm not coming up with one off the top of my head. One other thing that it does that hasn't really been mentioned too much, because uh, Soothsayer did the same thing. If you get it to level three and are in player level three, you can play a Forgeborn rank three and drop and get the rank four Forgeborn into play. And there's something to be said about that, because if you've been playing this all game, you've thinned your deck, so you're more likely to draw your rank 3 Forgeborn. And dropping a Oros 4 or a Cersei 4 on 3.1, in addition to the rank 3 version of those cards, all in one turn, eh, that's pretty strong. I don't know that that's going to make the rank 4 Forgeborn suddenly gameplay viable, but... Just because the rank four forgeborns are fun and they're kind of a uh, unicorn and that they're never seen, eh, it might be fun to throw together a deck that's designed to use Remembrance to get rank four forgeborns out there. That is probably the strongest card of the set. All right, and that brings us to the card that everyone's talking about. Wipe clean. <laughs> I consider it saying Sparky, but um, wipe clean is an interesting card. Um, someone in chat, I believe it was level nine light spell, said that it was bad card design to answer bad card design. I disagree with that assessment. I do agree with the assessment that uh, Ice Grass was bad card design. Uh, it sped the meta up to a point where you started ignoring the basic draw of Soul Forge by having games that ended every time in player level 2. Uh, if you played against the Ice Grass deck, the game 95% of the time ended in player level 2. Win or lose, it was over in player level 2. Which meant that the whole idea of this leveling concept and going to play level 3 and getting your big cards was irrelevant. 
It made any deck that relied on a level three card a non-starter from the get-go. Uh, Heroes Kage, that's debatable. Uh, we can talk about Icecraft after I finish going through the new cards. But I, I still feel like Ice Grasp is a bad design. But we can talk about that next. This guy is a kind of standard Wrath of God spell. It hits everybody indiscriminately. I don't feel like Wrath of God spells were bad design. Um, if you look at it as this was an answer to Ice Grasp exclusively, then yes, it would be a bad design. If you have to print one card that is, its only purpose is to answer a card that's too powerful in the meta, that would be a great example of bad design. But this guy has so freaking many uses beyond Ice Grasp. Um, I kind of want to go back and remake my old wall defender deck just because of this card. It makes Brawn significantly less powerful. It makes Behemoths just pitiful. Um, and if you have a bunch of defenders on the board, uh, let's say you have three Citadel Guards, all of them lose Defender, which was something that the Defender deck always needed. It's got the upgrade card and the uh, Spark Stone Elemental thing. But none of those ever seem to really be strong enough by themselves nor reliable enough to draw. This gives you something that can increase your board presence for removal of Defender. Or if you're playing a N, which is probably what I would lean towards, you can also remove Evan Skull Knight's drawback. Uh, and in its place, give you a very strong board presence with uh, all your Defenders no longer having Defender. So, I really like this card. I think it's got a lot of potential to uh, open up some interesting avenues of deck construction. And it will be seen in pretty much every Alloyan deck ever. Uh, to what YS Chaos and Heroes Kage are talking about right now, yes, there should be a way to answer every card. And... Vitamins and Ice Grasp and the Necrium and Alloyan ones that are not nearly as powerful and nobody plays uh, didn't have a way to answer it. The, yeah, you just played it and you go, okay, well, that's I can't do anything about that. I just have to work around it. And there are times when that's going to happen, but you should be able in deck construction to say, okay, I know this is coming. How do I answer it? And the answer can't be outrace it with dinos. I am, of course, talking about uh, Ice Grasp. Uh, I see what level 9 light spell is saying that. This card is so hard to counter to it that the Ice Grasp, ice grasp and Vitamins are now pretty much unplayable. And I'm not entirely sure I agree with that. The meta's going to ebb and flow. Um, I understand what you're saying, but I need to see how the meta stabilizes. Honestly, with Ice Grass, though, and like I said, we'll talk about it in a minute, I, I feel like there was no way to fix it. If you make it just two damage, it becomes too slow for that to be a viable deck. Um, if you leave it at three damage, it's too fast for the, anything else in the meta. But yeah... Yin Kuza, like I said, uh, a defender deck with this guy seems appealing to me.
Uh, Snuggletooth makes a good point that it will also, if you're playing a Loyan Hater Raid, it will also shut down your Justicars and your Arbiters. So you have to be careful in that regard. But I still think it's well worth the risk. Uh, Alright, the last card, and my favorite card in the set, not the most powerful, but my favorite card is Sparky the Guard Dog! Oh, how I wish I could justify the silver expenditure just to buy three of this guy right now. Um, I so, so love this card. Yes, I know it's silly. Yes, I know you're never going to get a Forge Guardian Omega out of it. However, it is not unreasonable to think that with Immortal Echoes and Varna's Pact that you could get to the rank 3 in player level 1, which is what I really want to try to do. It's going to take a good combination of things to happen, but you drop, let's say you drop Marty McGear turn 1. Now, you gotta, yeah, do it. Let's say you're going second, so I can get the ideal scenario. You drop Sparky and Marty in turn 1. Sparky's the only dog, only robot in your deck. Activate Sparky, you get a sec. Or sorry, activate Marty, you get a second Sparky. Activate Sparky, you kill both of them. You now have a rank two Sparky. At that point, you only need to play one Sparky on your next turn, or Immortal Echoes, one of the two you just killed back, to get to a rank three Sparky. And a fourteen sixteen rank three creature in player level one is absolutely terrifying. Now, I know that's not going to be the regular happenstance use case. But it is going to drive some people absolutely insane. Yes, I know you have to have two rank three Sparkies in order to get the Forge Guardian Omega. That's fine. Uh, but to get to the rank three Sparky, it's not that difficult. And a 14-16 rank three creature in player level one is a very, very terrifying proposition. Now you have sacrificed two plays to do it. Only two plays. You played Marty, you played a Sparky, and I guess you can say two and a half plays, because you use the Marty activation, which you're unlikely to get, because Marty probably gets killed, but yeah, we won't talk about that. Um, yeah. I'm looking forward to playing with this. And then it gets Dust Mod. Dust Mod is the only thing that answers it in player level one. But... If you get the rank 3 Sparky on the board in turn, let's see here, that scenario put it at 1.3. 1.3 and 1.4, there isn't an answer, except for Dust Maul. Yeah, uh, Diablo Soulforge, I absolutely agree with you. It will be hard to get Sparky going. I don't think there's any doubt in my mind that it will be hard to get Sparky going. But... I just like the card. I think it's a very fun card. Um, I wish that it would put a Forge Guardian Omega into your discard pile as a, in addition to one of your spaces, but that's neither here nor there. I don't think... Yeah, I, if you're making a Sparky deck, yes, the dream, of course, is to get to a Forge Guardian Omega, but what you're really trying to do is get a very early game rank 3 on the board. You throw in some buff cards so that you can buff said rank 3, and then you can get something terrifying. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting the play set of him and playing with it. All right, that does it for the new cards. Uh, I'm trying to remember how many Martys I have. I only have two. I need one more Marty. Basically a bad Leafkin. Uh, yes and no, Heroes Kage. The fact that it's a robot, which means you can get it from Marty, helps it quite a bit. And it has significantly better stats than Leafkin. Its rank 1 doesn't just, you know, roll over and die to anything. And everything. Yes, it still rolls over and dies to a lot. It's a dog. What do you expect? It's going to play dead. But it at least can, you know... Survive a few possible first turn plays. 
Uh, all right, so I'm going to quickly have the ice grass dis discussion. This card has been talked to death because it tore up the meta and did absolutely horrible things, in my opinion, for the constructed queue. Um, on its surface, when you first read it, and this was my first take as well, this is a card that I thought could be really fun, but probably not super power, not overpowering, turned out to be completely wrong. Um, I <laughs> crafted the playset of them and started playing with this the day that Zaniel put up his uh, crazy deck shop for it. I blame Zep Zan for breaking the meta. I'm sure that it would have happened. But, uh, having the ability to deal damage to the face in every Tempest spell in a faction that has, by its nature, lots of spells that do lots of damage, potentially to the face, and extra free spells, opened the door to having a deck style that could kill somebody without interacting with the board in any meaningful way for their opponent, but kill somebody every time by a player level three. I say every time I've played this deck, I know that there are occasions where it goes to 3.1. That was the longest game I played with this deck was I killed somebody on my 3.1, and it... That was a very, very rare occurrence. So there's something to be said about aggressive decks. And it is definitely a play style that is fun to play. But there should be a way to counter an aggressive deck such that you make it to the late game. It can't be an out race for the game. Sure, that... That was the very first thing I did I, I, when I saw Zan's crazy deck shop, because it was for Mono Faction, Mono Faction Tempest. The very first thing I did after I tried one Mono Faction queue was like, eh, that was okay, but not great, was I put Dragon Wake and Steel Scale in the deck and um, streamed it. So I'll take a little bit of credit for modifying it, but uh, Zaniel gets all the credit for breaking the meta. Raven, Gre Raven GR, uh, it would be three Sparky, three Marty, three Immortal Echoes, and the rest spells if you want to go that route. You can't play Sparky and not play Marty. Uh, yeah, I, I... when Once that deck became a presence in the meta, every single deck had to be an aggressive deck. Yes, it opened up a new style of play, the uh, all spell deck, or functionally all spell deck with Steel Scale Dragon, Ambriel Archangel if you're feeling spicy. Uh, yeah, it opened up that deck, but at the same time, it killed off any deck that wanted to uh, make it to player level 3 and took so much of the deck design because the game is about creatures at a fundamental level and every direct creature spell that you have in your deck as a, an opponent is meaningless because you have nothing on their board to interact with. So you are play two creatures in turn, watch your two creatures die, play two creatures in turn, watch your two creatures die, play two creatures in turn, and then you die. It it just, it, the only way to beat it was to outrace it. You, there, there was no other option. You couldn't say, put up uh, armor because of Shatterbolt. So even if you wanted to try the Barrier Soldier approach, Barrier Soldier wasn't beefy enough. Barrier Soldier or Ambriel approach, either one, uh, neither of those were beefy enough to endure the burn spells that the Ice Grass deck plays, and you ended up dying.
Snuggletooth, that's an interesting uh, modification. That would help some. But I, I just... The design of the card... Maybe I'm maybe I Heroes Kage is right and is saying that the design is good, but it's too strong. With the game, with the way the game works right now, I think if you make the nerf that uh, Snuggletooth is mentioning, or even just nerf it to two damage, it becomes too slow to be any good. I know 100 health sounds like a lot to play with. Well, the difference between 2 damage and 3 damage is quite significant. Um, over the course of a game, let's say you drop one of these on turn 1, which is not uncommon for the deck to do. And then the game is going to go until 3.1. Well, let's back it off a little bit. Let's say it goes until 2.3. That is 2, 4, 6, 7. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 damage that you're taking off of it uh, if you nerf it to 2 damage. Now, I'm going to leave the part of the balance of the card is the later into the game it goes, the less damage it does. So if you're in player level 2 and didn't see any of them, well, you're just dead. You've <laughs> died. You're not going to be able to do the damage to the face fast enough to be able to recover. But... Uh, where the where the life totals are right now, three is too strong and two is too weak for it to be a viable option, in my opinion. If you take 13 damage off the card, and when you're doing these race games, the margin of victory is oftentimes one turn, and you're winning by the skin of your teeth on the race, 13 damage is significant. So, yeah, I I understand that it opened up a new deck style. Uh, I really enjoyed playing with it initially. Uh, I played with it for about two weeks in Constructed Q. It was my preferred deck. And then I got tired of it and realized that there wasn't another deck that was viable that, except racing it. Uh, you basically had Dinosaurs and Brawn or Wagyu and Life Drain. And I've played Dinosaurs to death, as anybody that has followed my stream for any amount of time knows. I was playing Dinosaurs back in the, uh, what, two World Qualifiers ago? Two WCQs? Uh, with AT right after Brawn and uh, Thunderstomp came out. <laughs> back when I was still trying to convince everybody that AT was better than UT. Sorry. The UT was better than UN. I don't know where the A is coming from. Hey, look, somebody is asking to be banned. Cut banned. Oops. Banned. <laughs> and yes, it's not that it was unbeatable. It's that it created an environment which the game felt like you had to race. Um, Jimbo's, you may be a better player, you're, you're a better player than I am. Uh, with AU, with any sort of leveling deck that I tried, it is possible to win, but it requires your opponent to miss on ice grass for a few turns. And now, pretty much every deck that you see in the constructed queue revolves around going as fast as humanly possible. And having selective removal and gimmicks and fun is irrelevant. Play the biggest creature you have as quickly as possible and synergize with dinosaurs or Wagyu. And that's because of what the Ice Grasp, the ice grasp did to the burn deck and how it warped the meta. Anyways, that's Ice Grasp. I played it. Um, I was one of the first to jump on board with it, in fact. Right, streamed it the same day that Zan made his article. Uh, uh, 
This was the version that I ultimately ended up thinking was the most powerful with Steel Scale Dragons and Stasis Wardens. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, anyways, let's go do another high rarity draft. Enough doom and gloom about the state of the constructed meta. Um, wow, I'm not terribly impressed with any of this. I'm going to take a Soul Reap. It's probably a terrible option, but I'm going to do it. One man army, that's a troubling statement. Any game, any, any card game like this, by its very nature, has to have cards that are more powerful than anything else. You're going to have cards that turn out to be higher on the power curve. And those are the cards that you're going to see most often in Constructed. Um, particularly with the scale and rate at which Stoneblade keeps putting out more cards, it's impossible to have a perfectly balanced set of card bases. Uh, I definitely agree with Level 9 Light Spell that it's better than the Brood Queen Tracker meta pre- uh, Brood Queen and Doom Rider nerf. Oh my gosh. Those were not fun days. Anyways, I took a Soul Reap. I'm going to take an Ebon Skull. And a Zra. And a Nexus Tech. And a Contagion Lord. Wow. I'm going to try something crazy and take a Marty. This is going to blow up in my face, but I'm going to do it. Take Patron. Take Leyline. Take the Dreadbolt. Take the Hydra. Yeah, I knew it was going to blow up in my face. Not going to give me what I want. Take Varna. Gosh. Nexus Gunner. Heaven Skull. Warmonger, Drass Will. Come on, I want a Sparky. Ugh, Killian. Okay, this is not going to be a good draft. Not going to be a good draft at all. Oh. Gosh. I want one Sparky. That's all I ask for. Please, please, please give me a Sparky. Nope. The game hates me. This is terrible. Although, the number of Brood Queens I've seen... Ugh, I might just conceive this one and do another one. I'm going to play at least one game, but that was painful. Yeah, I know. Did I even draft a robot? Should I draft two Martys and no robots? I did, didn't I? <laughs> oh, gosh. This is the worst deck I've ever drafted. I really just wanted to draft Martys and Sparkies. I don't know. I wanted to uh, concede out four games and try this again. Because that was horrific. I mean, seriously, horrific. I really wanted to do a Marty Sparky deck. 
But he didn't give me any Martys or any Sparkies. Got two Martys. Oh, this is terrible. Okay, so I just threw two tickets away. Oh. I didn't even get the white clean that I wanted for my Evan Skull. Here, people, have free wins. I will admit that there were at least enough people playing that uh, we're getting to see relatively quick cues. SBE Nick has left us. If he sent me an email. Mail.yahoo.com. Speaking of email, uh, Soul Forge codes. Who thinks we should give a, do a giveaway? I just have to remember what the last code I gave away was. I think it was 609H, but we can find out. Chrome. Uh, Twitch. TV. Messages. Outbox. Snuggle Tooth. One last night. About 23 hours ago. It was OS05. OSO5, so then it is this one next. Twitch.tv slash Chatka. La 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 la. Keyword. Whoa, I'm in a game? I'm sorry, I meant to concede. There you go, Jiggy. Uh, keyword. Pound. Sparky. Come home. This is for a draft code. I do agree with Jimbo's, though. Um, I don't think any of the cards are cancer, because cancer is a terrible disease that kills people. I know that people try to make analogies, but... Equating everything to cancer or equating everything to Nazis really makes cancer and Nazis lose just how horrible those things are. Yes, a card that made your game less fun because you liked the mechanic of going to play level 3 was not good, but, you know, it's not a wasting disease that slowly killed you while you suffered an intense pain and your family watched while financially bankrupting you. See, there's a bit of a difference. And when everything is said to be like cancer, or any person that has a view that differs from you is a Nazi, Nazis were, the, the Nazi party was, you know, kind of a uh, really bad thing. Mass genocide. But yes, uh, Obama is a Nazi because he won't approve a pipeline through the middle of the country. What? I think we need to... There are certain people that go... Yeah, anyways. Omen Raven is correct that we've gone kind of off track. and Let's get back to actually, you know, playing games. While everybody is entering the draft giveaway, I will start up the draft part of the next high rarity draft. 